we'll get started here. Um, for the benefit of the tape, this is the Newark City School District Board of Education regular meeting being held at the Roosevelt Administrative Offices. It is 6.30 p.m. on June 8th, 2015. Jeff, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Blower? Here. Mr. Carr? Here. Mr. Harden? Here. Ms. Nickham? Here. Mr. Blind? Here. We have a quorum of five. Tim, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would just uh, go ahead. share with the board tonight, we've got a special presentation from a special group of uh, individuals, ladies here tonight, but there are some gentlemen in their group that aren't here uh, tonight. Just one gentleman. Just one gentleman. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I know I, I, I do, I'm, yeah, I am fortunate uh, to sit on that board and, and really uh, appreciate uh, sitting in those meetings, the commitment that our community and members of the board and, and uh, Sarah and Diane and their group of, of wonderful people commit to our students and give them opportunities in life. It's just fabulous. And I keep mentioning this. There is no other program that can match this in the state of Ohio that I'm aware of. Probably even the Midwest of schools that I'm aware of. And, and we need to be thankful of that and appreciative of, of what they do. So for 45 minutes tonight, they're going to, oh, oh it's just 15. I'll, I'll let you do. I was teasing Sarah that she had to fill in that last half hour. So, yeah. anyhow, thank you, ladies. And these are my notes, so oh. <laughs> I do not have 30 minutes worth. Yeah. Of I've been around you a lot. You can fill that half hour. I'm, I'm confident of that. That's, That's a common half hour. Oh. <laughs> Between the two hours, we'll fill it. Okay. Well, we. I, I am Sarah Wallace, and I chair the board. No, I guess I'm president of the board of Macaulay College of the governing board. So I'm not working directly in the program at the high school and in, in the schools, but I'm uh, working with the fiduciary board on, on a regular basis. And we just thank you guys so much for allowing us to come. We'd like to come and talk to you and bring you up to speed on what is happening within the program every year or so, just so that you're, you're aware, because we have, I think, a very, very unique partnership. We've always had a terrific relationship with uh, the Newark schools in every way, whether it's administrators or faculty or uh, the Board of Education the superintendent. It's just been, and that is what makes this really, really work for the school system, it really is. And, and the message that you all send about the importance of this program is paramount to, to what we're doing, it really is. <coughs> Um, we have a we have basically four board meetings each year, um, major board meetings, and at the May board meeting, we like to invite all of the staff to come and inform the whole board about the activities that have taken place and get a, a real close look at what is happening within the program. This year we had that in May as as we normally do, and we had already had the date set to come and, and visit with you today, but I thought it would be extremely helpful for you all not to just hear from me and from Diane, but to hear from a couple of the other staff members also and give you kind of the benefit of a scaled down version of the update that they gave the board when each of, because I, th I think it's really interesting what all is happening and how the, the program is evolving and in, Improving and we're evaluating it and and all those sorts of things. So I just thank you so much for all you do to support this program because we couldn't do what we were doing without you. That's really the truth. So I will turn this over to these capable hands to my left and move away here. Thank you. My name is Shannon Chichira and um, I'm on staff at a call to college. I have my dream job. And my husband and I are parents to two boys who are students in the Newark City Schools. We have a rising eighth grader and a rising sixth grader. So um, I'm going to talk about a couple of things tonight. I'm going to start out with PEAK. Our PEAK program 
allows us to work with students in the second, fourth, sixth, and eighth grades. And our curriculum is called College and Money Savvy Wildcats. So we're teaching the students about basic college going behaviors and then some financial skills, specifically saving, spending, donating, and investing. Um, this fall, I was able to teach at Cherry Valley Elementary. It's my second year there. I had a great partnership with that school. And I wrapped up teaching in November. So I am gonna fast forward. Uh, this is a picture of the power of peak. Again, second, fourth, sixth, and eighth grade. And this is a student who was part of our fourth grade curriculum. And uh, let's see, we wrapped up in November. This was several months later. This is Lindsay, and she had gone to the Columbus Home and Garden Show, and she found this bank that matched exactly those money management skills that we had addressed with them. So save, spend, donate, and invest. She bought the bank with her own money and brought it back to school and said, hey, this is what a college is teaching us. So we were so thankful that Mrs. Sawyer <laughs> chose, fourth grade teacher there, chose to share this picture with us. We know that our teaching's having an impact. Um, let's see. This is Mrs. Klein, and she was a brand new teacher this year at Ben Franklin in second grade. And we like to strike while the iron's hot, so we asked her right out the gate, would you like to be one of our peak captains? And the story is that Mrs. Klein was a little reluctant. She went home that night and said, yeah, it's my first year of teaching. I'm not sure I want to take this on. I'm going to be busy. Well, it just so turned out that Mrs. Klein has a younger sister in fourth grade, and she had been part of our program. She said, you have to do this. Peak is so cool. You have to be the peak captain. So with the help of Lily, our fourth grader, we recruited another peak team captain. So we appreciate Lily's efforts. This is a picture of some of our sixth graders. Every fall, or actually it's right in December, we take all of our fifth, all of our sixth graders, I'm sorry, about 500 sixth graders on a trip to one of eight college campuses. Um, it's a great time. They all enjoy the visit. Um, we always lead those trips because we do them over three days. It takes every staff member to make it happen. Um, and so we always come back and say, how did it go? Our trip was good. What did you think? Are we hoping it's having the impact that we're wishing for? Uh, and we found out for sure this year that it does because, again, I mentioned we teach in the eighth grade and several students in the eighth grade, when we talk about colleges they could be interested in or maybe even want to attend someday, brought up the college that they visited in the sixth grade. So we know that those visits are having an impact. Um, the second thing I'd like to share with you today is um, something called our Academic Wall of Excellence. This is a big display board. It sits outside our office at a call to college if you have a chance to come by the high school. Um, until this past year, the wall was dark and empty. There was nothing on it. It's a big display board. And that's all changed now. So we've used the board in a lot of different ways, <coughs> but the focus is always to promote academic excellence among our students at the high school. This is Lee Kirkpatrick. Some of you may know Lee, and he happened by our office, so he had to use a picture next to his display. But, Lee is a 2009 graduate of Newark High School. He's a 2013 graduate of the Columbus College of Art and Design. While he was in college, he was selected for a summer internship with Martha Stewart. And then this past fall, Lee was named um, one of Central Ohio's up and coming designers by Capital Style Magazine. So just some really exciting and interesting things. When we feature a past grad like that, we always ask them, tell us something you did in high school that helped you be successful. And then we include that on the wall so students can see that. This next panel on the right, this is what we called our selfie wall. Uh, we got a great response. We reached out through social media to our current college students and said, hey, send us a picture of yourself in your college gear, somewhere on campus. These kids were so excited to come by. They're there pointing at their own picture. Um, but we just got a great response to that. So I'm sure we will do something like that again next year. It was a lot of fun. The panel on the right is our Kent State visit. Every fall, we take students on a college visit that's out of campus, or I'm sorry, out of county. So we went to Kent State this past fall. Uh, the, the visit this year has yet to be determined. Um, the panel on the left was actually my very favorite panel that I worked on. Um, this is a young man named Matt Compton. Matt is a sophomore, and uh, we heard from Matt's teacher that he had a sudden and dramatic turnaround in the middle of his sophomore year. Something happened, he put his foot on the gas and took off. 
um, just made great strides academically. And so we interviewed Matt, again, asked him to share habits. What, what helped you? How did you do this? And so we shared that on the wall. And um, we titled it One to Watch because we want him to know we've got our eye on him and that we're impressed by what he's doing. And he's a great role model for, role model for students. Um, this academic wall of excellence has just been a thrill to do. Um, it's exciting for me for a couple of reasons. One, um, I get to see teachers come by and stop and see former students and be able to catch up on what's going on in their lives. Um, but I think the most exciting thing for me is watching our current students walk by and see um, the possibility of what their lives look <coughs> like after they leave the halls of Newark High School. So I, I, my, my very favorite endorsement, we had a student walk into our office, <coughs> point out at the wall, and she said, hey, I want to be on that wall. How do I do that? So um, that's all I have for today. I'm going to turn it over to Tara Havishel. Thank you. So I have two topics that I want to cover with you today. Um, last spring, our Call to College board charged us with developing and implementing a freshman program, which would allow our students to wait less time before they see us again their junior year. We're all very excited about it. We learned quickly that the stars were aligned because shortly after we were charged to develop this ninth grade program, we also learned through Maura Horgan that the high school is planning to develop a freshman success program as well. Maura ended up inviting us to deliver our programming during this class time. It was a near perfect timing and perfect fit. A fast and fabulous partnership between North City Schools administration, teachers, and a call to college was immediately created. And the rest is soon to be history as we launch a freshman success program this fall with all of our freshmen. Knowing that our program would be part of a larger freshman success class at North High School, we began to design and develop a call to college's portion of that curriculum. The, cur the curriculum includes topics that will help to lead our freshmen towards success after high school. Some of the top topics include the importance of a transcript, good attendance and how that affects grades, grade point average and its potential impact on college options and scholarships, getting involved, choosing a challenging course load, and setting goals. Ultimately, we want our freshmen to start their story. We want to communicate to freshmen that their freshman year is not just another year, but the start of their high school story, and that their choices will write their story and lead to college and career success. This story theme led us to a really exciting curricular component. We decided to interview Newark High School students who could share their personal high school stories in the areas of attendance, goal setting, extracurriculars, and so on. We ended up hiring Antoine Grutars, a foreign exchange student from Belgium, to videotape and produce our students' stories in four dynamic and relevant videos. As adults, we can communicate the importance of these things, but to hear it from their peers, we feel is so much more impactful, and we are so excited to show these videos to our freshmen this fall. Earlier, I referenced the partnership between North City Schools administration, teachers, and call to college. Here's a picture of part of that team, eight out of 12 of us, that has developed the freshman success program this year. We feel so fortunate to be a part of this task force and are incredibly excited about the work that has been done and what is yet to be done to support all of our North students' success. Continuing the theme of partnership, allow me to share some great things about how we have served our North students who attend CTEC. Once the joint vocational school, CTEC, CTEC now has a competitive admissions program, strives diligently to prepare its students for a professional world, and overall has developed a college-bound culture with its students. Our program at CTEC for our North students was not new this year, but had been somewhat sporadic in years past. So leading into this year, we chose to focus on providing consistency and equal opportunity to a call to college services. Meet Holly Lance on the left and Haley Foreman on the right. Holly is one of many of our volunteer advisors and is also a North High grad. Haley was a full year practicum student who just graduated from COTC this spring with her associate's degree in human services. Haley is also a North graduate, and her children are current students here in the North School District. Fantastic connections with North City Schools. 
Collaborating closely with CTAC administration and their guidance office, together, the three of us led the group advising program that was developed for our North students at CTEC this year. One out of many firsts this year was the implementation of a group advising program. In the background here, you see a color-coded schedule of about 17 groups of students that we ended up meeting with three times over the course of the year. In fact, 70% of all of our Newark students, about 100, received college-related related advising at CTEC this year. In addition to group advising, our seniors, meet Sierra Parton here, participated in a lot more activities this year compared to years past, one of it which was setting up appointments at Newark High School to receive help with the FAFSA and last dollar grant processing. That's what she's doing here with Mr. Underhill. And our juniors, meet Josie Gracial here. They had an incredible year participating and expanded a call to college services most of which had to do with preparing for and taking the ACT. In fact, we experienced record signups for the ACT amongst our CTEC juniors this year. And so again, by the end of an absolutely fantastic year, 70% of our North students at CTEC participated in advising this year. Many also attended numerous events, and we can't wait to get started again next year. Good evening. I'm Diane DeWater, the <coughs> director of the Call to College program, and uh, one of several very, very delighted people to be here tonight. I'm proud to share that the staff at a Call to College works hard to do everything we can to support all of the district's efforts in messaging good career and college momentum as students progress through and beyond the walls of Newark City Schools. Our programming impacts students, as Shannon said, in every second, fourth, sixth, eighth, and eleventh, and twelfth grades. And again, we'll soon be uh, coming into the ninth grade with direct student services. Picture to my right in the picture are some of the folks who aren't here this evening: Janet Schultz, our college and student intern Amanda Hunt, Brett Underhill. Shannon Chichira, Tara Howdeshell, Julie Yubel, and Sue Kent. Just to take a little breath from all this information, get your brains rolling here, and uh, see if uh, we can play a little guessing game. Take a look at this number, $365,000. Anyone want to take a guess as to what this represents? Okay, I'll give you a little hint. Hint number one, Joan Troutman is one of 12 members of our high school volunteer advising program that provides direct individual advising services to juniors and seniors three times throughout the school year. Hint number two, high school advising experience. Annie Clauder at the top left and Cynthia Menzer both have been advising students for seven years. <laughs> For 16 combined years, Linda Giles and Lisa Kroc have helped students navigate through this process. Hint number three, recruit new talent. New advisor Ryan Breckbill is director of career services at Otterbein, and, Jan and Karen Schrader offers a wealth of experience with the college going process. Hint number four, recruit from within. Advisor Linda James retired from NHS teaching and wanted to stay involved to help our students. On the right is Sherry Frankel, who is also a retired NHS teacher. She is sitting beside another advisor and one of our leaders on loan from Park National Bank. Eric Baker is a past graduate of Newark High School and participated in the A Call to College program just a few years ago. Two more leaders on loan from Park National Bank and NHS grads and a call to college participants. Tim Keith on the upper left and Ellie Akey are also high school advisors. So here's that $365,000 number again. This amazing total represents in dollars the incredible gift of talent, energy, 
and time that our volunteer advisors have given to a call to college since 1991. If one were to estimate the potential cost of replacing our volunteer advising corps with paid staff, this number would be our starting point. These volunteers are a valuable resource <coughs> and the backbone of our high school advising programming. Paying forward. If we're to look beyond high school, opportunities extend past graduation, including last dollar grants of up to $1,000 each year for <coughs> 200 college-bound students. That's a yearly commitment of a call to college of about $200,000 that directly helps Newark High graduates afford to continue their education beyond high school. We have given away well over a million dollars of, do of, of last dollar grants to Newark High graduates since 1991. And these graduates commit to returning yearly to a not only apply and reapply for last dollar grants, but they come back to give up their time volunteering with a call to college. You see here in this picture that we have graduates home on break talking with Newark High School juniors about their college experiences during our program, College Talk. They offer valuable advice and provide a near peer experience that helps high school students visualize themselves taking advantage of continued education possibilities. The college student on your left is attending uni the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Since his family relocated after high school graduation, he and his sister drove all night to come back to Newark High School to be a part of a call to college, college talk. The student on the right just graduated from Miami University of Ohio. He is the third in his family to go through a call to college and graduate from college. They all return to these events every year. Our graduates' dedication to this program and to their future is remarkable. And they're proud to be able, we're proud to be able to help them on their journey toward reaching goals and accessing and succeeding in their education. Our student recognition breakfast in May celebrates some of the high school student seniors you see here who have been calculated early and determined to be last dollar grant recipients. We are pleased to share their success with board and community members, NCS staff and administration, parents and donors, and look forward to being beside them as they transition to college. This summer, we will be offering a complete your loan paperwork workshop, assisting many students just like this with the process of accessing the federal student loans that are sometimes necessary to help them pay for additional schooling. Our office is open during the summer also to assist with additional NHS graduates with applying for the last dollar grants and navigating through the required steps as they carve their path toward a bright future. We want to thank you this evening. We're happy to share our story and proud to be a partner with New York City Schools. Thank you very much for having us. Does anyone have any questions? I have a comment, and, and that is that uh, my son just graduated, and so I spent many hours in the call to college office the last two years. And uh, every time I had a question about the process of applying for scholarships or college or the FAFSA, his answer was, I know I have to do that. I already know how to do that. I've already done that. And, my, and I would always say, well, how do you know? And it was always, oh, I met with my college, college advisor last week. We already took care of it. So I mean, he kept me on track because he knew exactly what to do because he had met with his advisor so frequently. And it, it was a very incredibly smooth process. That's what we want. Thank you. That's Thanks for sharing it today. Yeah. I had a comment from the younger segment. Mm -hmm. No, but my daughter is. Um, she was in fourth grade this year, heard a presentation uh, for her birthday. We went down to see Lion King, and they, she wanted to get a souvenir. And as she looked at them, she said, they're all so expensive. And um, I learned in call to college, the program, that, that I need to be good with my money. She found a something that was, was $20, but the money went to help uh, AIDS victims, 
for AIDS and recovery and research. And so um, she goes, I can buy this and I can help people. And it's not too expensive. And I'm going, and, and fourth grade. Mm -hmm. you know, wow. She is. Mm -hmm. And um, so, but the thank to you guys for what you're doing. Um, because I say that every once in a while when she wants something from American Girl. <laughs> Those are kind of expensive, aren't they? Yeah. Appreciate it. I think Dan must have helped you put your numbers together because knowing our numbers and what counselors cost and staff cost, your three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars is way low, Diane. <laughs> way low. So I know Dan DeLauder, being the conservative banker, he must have helped you put that together. But you need my input. I'll show you more about what you're really doing for this school district. And it's a lot, lot higher than three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. You guys do a fantastic job. Thank you. And be sure to uh, pass our appreciation on to your staff and your volunteers. And your donors. Yes. 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 And the donors. Yes. Well, we will be sending a mailing to our many hundreds of donors that we do routinely every summer, not asking them for anything, but just bringing them up to date on progress within the program and so forth and I know they really I mean we have donors from all over the country who are watching this program and who really care about Newark students and want Newark students to really thrive so it's it's a terrific it's a terrific thing so thank you for having thank us. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, we'll move on to communications from the floor. If anybody has anything they would like to address the board regarding, please step to the podium, give your name, your address, and you'll have five minutes to speak. That was easy. We'll move on to treasurer's recommendations. Item 2A, 2A is approval of board meeting minutes for the May 11th, 2015 regular meeting. Item 2B is approval of the May 2015 financial reports and interest earned of $5,922.03. The fund balances are general fund $21,720,000, bond retirement $1,040,000, permanent improvement $1,240,000, Building fund, 100,000. Food service, 1,470,000. OSFC project local, 120,000. OSFC project state share, 1,610,000. Insurance funds, 2,790,000. Classroom facilities, uh, 2,960,000. Miscellaneous others, 600,000. For a total of 33,660,000. Actually, 600. $57,356, which agrees with the bank. Item 2C is approval of the permanent 2016 permanent supplemental appropriation resolution. Uh, we had a uh, change in the 003. Uh, 412881 would be transferred to the 034 maintenance fund. Uh, 019 other grants. Uh, had uh, learning grants for Rebecca Holloway of $500, Nick Myers $500, Melissa Sanders $498.66, and Tara Boyer $499.99. Fund 401 Auxiliary Services had interest earned of $186, and 499 e-textbook grant for elementaries was $9,668. Item 2D is the approval of the fiscal year 2015 Temporary appropriation resolution. We passed this so we can start business and pay bills immediately on July 1, and that stays our appropriation until October when we pass a more permanent approval or resolution showing a better, hopefully, uh, appropriation for the school year. Item 2E is approval of agreement for deposit of public funds uh, with Park National Bank. Uh, I have to, have to do that every five years, and the five years is up. And I'm desiring to renew it with Park National Bank. They've been a fantastic partner for us. And then item F is just a reminder that we have a special board meeting on June 30th, 2015 at 4.30 p.m. to approve the final appropriation for fiscal year 2015. 
Is there any motion? So moved. Second that. Comments, discussion? I will point out, Jeff, that on D, the heading says approval of FY15 should be corrected to 16. 2D? Yes. Yeah, that's 16 in the, in the agenda. It says 16 online. It, it, I think it's 16 on the agenda, but on the yeah, actual all document, it's 16. You're so five minutes ago. Yeah. See, on the document, it is 16. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I just thought the agenda is correct. The minutes will be. Sounds good. Any other discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Hardin? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Blowers? Yes. Ms. Lincoln? <coughs> yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Thank you. And now that Jeff stalled long enough to get Doug back. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> He did a good job of telling me that for you. Okay. We have a, a, a couple new uh, prospective teachers. You haven't been hired yet, so you're still prospective. But I'm just going to go since you're here. If you would stand up, tell us who you are. Uh, maybe where you can you come to the podium? Let the board know. You guys decide which order you want to go. We've got an elementary and a high school, so we'll see who the good young ladies here. Uh, my name is Meredith Gilbert. I'm prospective teacher for um, high school for life sciences. Um, originally from Tupin, Ohio, I'm living in Columbus, Ohio at the moment. Very happy to be on board. That's perfect, thank you. I'm Aubrey Davis, I'm the elementary, half day at Carson, half day at Ben, for intervention specialist. I've been subbing for two years in the district and I'm very excited, so thank you. Where are you from? I went to school at Lake Valley, but. We're sorry. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm a teacher here in Newark. <laughs> yeah, but I wanted to say, but you're a Newark girl now. Right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, two very good uh, young ladies here. So I'm going to jump back and forth from addendums, because we have three addendums, and I appreciate the board allowing us to do this because we just received a resignation this afternoon, so we'd like to get that position posted. And also, uh, we have some. Uh, over from Friday and over the weekend we had some uh, job offers out there and, and uh, people that are uh, electing to uh, come join us which is fantastic so uh, under personnel retirements and resignations uh, Tara Boyer but you will see her later in the agenda um, I'll read down through the whole whole list but Julie Elwell the one that just came in an addendum is uh, Deborah Eshwal who was a English language arts teacher at the high school uh, who has been on a, a leave of absence and uh, decided to retire. So we wish uh, Deb well. Also down here under classified staff, I'm going to point out to the retirement of Kat Gilligan. Kathy uh, Gilligan, who's been with us for 20 years and has been at Wilson for a while. Wonderful lady. We wish uh, Kat well. The appointments and assignments. We have new teachers down through here, Amy Brown, Molly Klein, Aubrey Davis, who's back there with her fingers crossed, Meredith Gilbert, Lauren Hess, Lindsay Loshball, Kim Markle, Ross Matheny, Audrey Owens, and then the addendums are Jonathan Besick, Adam Elderbrock, Jessica Holland, Megan Kelly, Addendum 2, Mary Cohen, Matthew Hardy. Uh, Matthew's one uh, who uh, just accepted a position today at John Clem, so that's the addition of, of Matt on our agenda. Supplemental contracts under item 4. have uh, science team leader at Wilson, Jessica Wolpe. Salary positions and adjustments. Here are, there are a few of them in here, and these are our, our uh, moves. We do have, and this is under position only, and I want to emphasize this. This is under position only, and it is for audit purposes, and it is just to make our organizational chart uh, what uh, legal. To, legal and to realign that. And that is uh, Maura Horgan and Mindy Vaughn. Maura will be... Uh, in charge of all of our curriculum now. Mindy's moving over from 
curriculum, state and federal grants to director of student services across the hall. Again, just position uh, linemen only. And I would, I would share with the board and others in the room and our community for that matter, uh, what these two young ladies have done in the last month, month and a half is incredible by maintaining the quality of our curriculum department while they're making those tr uh, transitions and there's people to hire, there's professional development to set up, there's everything else. So I do appreciate Mindy and Maura, uh, their time. Uh, Mindy and I last night were emailing back and forth uh, uh, on Sunday night at, on some things on, on, on that. And so, and I know Maura has put in uh, quite a bit of, of time with interviews and, and aligning that. And, and so we appreciate those two ladies stepping up to accept that challenge that they are worthy of carrying out for the district as they always have been. Did you email to Mindy, don't bother me during the Cavs game? Uh, it was before the Cavs game. You know, it was, I have to tell you. I, I wouldn't be a very good emailer during the Cavs game. Um, and then uh, we're very happy to announce uh, the new McGuffey principal, uh, McGuffey Elementary principal, Cindy Baker, who has uh, taught math in the district at Heritage uh, Middle School, also been a dean of students at um, Wilson Middle School, and uh, we're really excited about uh, Cindy taking that position. Uh, Mr. Tom Bowman, who was in here, 18 years service to the district, started out as a uh, high school teacher. Tom, I apologize, was it history? Social studies. Social yes. studies, uh, so I was in the ballpark. Uh, social studies, and uh, then became assistant principal for the last 11 years he's been the assistant principal and Tom will be our new high school principal and and so we welcome Tom in that position and and, and are very excited uh, for Tom. Tara Boyer who is not here tonight will uh, move into the assistant curriculum director position. Uh, Amber Dusenberry which is a position uh, uh, adjustment. Julie Elwell who will be moving and is the new principal of Carson Elementary School. We're really excited about that. The staff at Carson is very excited to have Julie uh, join them and, and lead that group, uh, which is an internal move. And then a fantastic science teacher in our high school and a fantastic young man with a lot of potential. I, I tell him that. And now publicly I'm saying that a lot of potential uh, from Matt Hazelton, super young man, will move from a dean of students to the assistant uh, principal position at the high school and uh, Matt and Tom with retirement uh, with Jessica with retirement and Mark have really stepped up and uh, and we have missed a beat in, in that high school now so once the wrestling match for the offices is complete <laughs> uh, then we'll, we'll really get ready to roll so our tutors are all there um, also uh, uh, substitutes uh, that process is Barbara uh, uh, is continuing. So if you're out there and you want to become a substitute, Barbara interviews all prospective substitutes, and that's a year-long process uh, to fill that. And so we had uh, Catherine Shee into that list. Uh, eight approval agreement with the SRO of Newark High School. This is at, at the same cost as always been for 183 days for the services of Dave Bar David Bardsley, who is a Newark City uh, police officer, and we play, pay the prorated portion of, of his salary. And uh, I continue to mention, and Dave, while you're, because I, I know you're sitting in the back, how much we appreciate that. That's 183 days, most school districts, that's during school time. I can call Dave on a Sunday night or a Saturday night when I hear something's going on or something that way, and, and Dave never responds to me, well, I'm off duty right now. Because Dave's always on duty for us. And Dave, we appreciate that. And so thank you for what you do. Uh, classified termination of a bus driver uh, who is in a probationary period and will be terminated is also on there. And did I go? Hey, okay. Yes. So we would entertain a motion to approve the superintendent's recommendations 3A. So moved. Second. Discussion? Questions? Call the roll, please, Jeff. Ms. Nickham? Yes. Mr. Blowers? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. How did I get there? Blind. 
Line. Yes. Yes. Line. Hi, Paul. You say yes. No, I right. said yes. Thank you. At least it wasn't misses. Do me a curve. Okay. <laughs> okay. Under students and curriculum, we have a, a normal or a special I education you contracts. Oh, okay. <coughs> special education contracts. Um, under item, there are no gifts, but I'm going to mention we we are very fortunate to have many gifts in this district throughout the years. But item uh, D, business. Uh, under item two, it's recommended the Board of Education authorize the treasurer to advertise bids for the following projects. Purchase of three school buses, size and type to be determined by transportation supervisor. And I, want, I do want to mention under that that we try to keep that rotation of our fleet. Uh, and we, we try to do three a year if possible, and, and that, that will eliminate the district from one time having to purchase 10 or, or 15. And so we do appreciate Dave and his knowledge of those things that has us on a good rotation with the, the buses. And, and uh, while we're under that, I will inform the board uh, Saturday graduation, that beautiful day we had. Um, after the Strawberry Festival and in between uh, some graduation uh, parties, I've ventured up to the bus garage because of an issue in the area that we don't need to get into. But I, uh, the gates were open, I pulled in a lot, and we had uh, about six or seven individuals in there preparing our buses for safety inspection. Uh, which, you know, I started talking to them and appreciated Saturdays and Sundays, they've had four days off in two months because how can I do this politically? Somebody decided that it was a great time to inspect our buses for next school year last week when we got out of school on Wednesday. But I am happy to, to say that we do have our buses all made it through inspection for next school year. But I, I want somebody to know, we'll be contacting some people. Uh, that caused a lot of people in our district to be away from home on Saturday and Sunday. It caused an extra expense for the district from overtime cost uh, when we could have had those employees work throughout the summer and, and then inspect uh, buses. So we're going to look into that issue uh, because I think there's something wrong with a system that says you're, you're done delivering students on Wednesday afternoon and then we're going to inspect your buses right then. And uh, so, but I, I wanted to point that out because I appreciate Jason Key and all of his uh, staff who worked so many Saturdays and Sundays the last few months to, to get us in there. And the New York City schools were prepared for that inspection. And so that's great to know. But, uh, you know, when you pull in and, and they're saying, Doug, we've had four days off since, you know, uh, end of March or so that way. And, uh, and I so much appreciate their time. We've got great people here. And so I wanted to point that out. So uh, item B. Angie, sorry. Motion for 3B. Andy. Andy, Andy. yes. Yes, Andy. So moved. Second. Discussion? I'll just point out that the buses are paid for <coughs> out of permanent improvement money. It would not be a general fund expense, I believe, correct? The purchase of them, the yeah. cleaning of them would be the general the purchase. fund. Purchase, yeah. Yes. Okay, call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Blowers? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Bly? Yes. Thank you. Okay, now comes my least favorite time in the meeting. Uh, anybody want to sub? Right. <laughs> right away. All the words. It is recommended the Board of Education announce its intent to adopt <coughs> the following policies as shown in the appendix an announcement be made that these policies will be available to the board, staff, and public for inspection from June 9, 2015 through July 10, 2015. From the Personnel Committee, File 1530, Evaluation of Principals and Other Administrators, File 1619.01, Privacy Protections of Self-Funded Group Health Plans, File 1662, Anti-Harassment, Administration, File 3120, Employment of Professional Staff, 
file 3362 anti-harassment certificated staff and file 4362 anti-harassment classified staff. So the intent has been given. And now it is recommended the Board of Education adopt the policies listed below and is shown in the appendix and is announced at the May 11, 2015 meeting of the Board of Education. File 1422, Non-Discrimination and Equal Employment Opportunity Administration. File 1520, Employment of Administrators. File 1623, Section 504 ADA, Prohibition Against Disability Discrimination in Employment Administration. File 3120.6, Employment of Personnel for Co-Curricular Extracurricular Activities. File 3122, Non-Discrimination and Equal Employment Opportunity Certificated Staff. File 3123, Section 504, ADA, Prohibition Against Disability Discrimination and Employment Certificated <coughs> Staff. File 4122, Non-Discrimination and Equal Employment Opportunity Classified Staff. File 4123, Section 504, ADA, Prohibition Against Disability Discrimination and Employment Classified Staff. File 7540.02, District Web Page. File 7540.03, Student Education Technology Acceptable Use and Safety. File 7540.04, Staff Education Technology Acceptable Use and Safety. File 7542, Access to District Technology Resources from Personnel Communication Devices. I would accept a motion to adopt those policies for B. So moved. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? Jeffrey, call the roll, please. Mr. Hardin? Yes. Ms. Nickham? Yes. Mr. Blower? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Blanc? Yes. Thank you. With that, we'll move to board discussion. I'll pass. I just say it's a good time to get rejuvenated. So I'm glad vacation is here. Thank you. Well, I know the kids are all ready to come back to school. They're bored already. And uh, at least that's what I hear at my house. I'm bored. And uh, but we're. We're hoping they enjoy the summer. Be careful. They're out there running the streets. Um, and, uh, literally. And so, but it's a, it's a great, it's a great, uh, great time for them to do something different. And uh, so, pleased with Call to College coming in and sharing with us. Um, so many folks have benefited from that. And, and what a benefit that is to our community. And I want to thank them for coming in and taking time to share with, that with us. That's all. Uh, thank you to Call the College. I'm very excited to hear that the PEAK program is expanding. Um, or I guess really the Call the College program, but just getting the ninth graders in there. That's great news. Uh, congratulations to Meredith and Aubrey, and thank you for attending tonight. And uh, congratulations to all our new administrators, Tom and Matt, are here tonight, but also uh, to the others. And uh, congratulations, graduates. Yeah, it was fun. Is that what it was? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to serve this board and to serve this community. That's all I got. Well, as, as Mike mentioned, uh, you know, we, we start with our, our staff, and I, I tell these fine people here in the back, take a step back, take a breath of good summer air, and I encourage our entire staff to do that uh, because that is good advice. Uh, recharge, rejuvenate. Uh, yourself and uh, this time of year I always reflect back on a year ago August we had students come in and uh, I'm excited about the new year because our, our focus is headed into that new year and, and uh, we're working hard every day to make sure our students get those opportunities and and that's what I'm really appreciative of, of being in a school district for because when I look back through the past school year it was about 6,500 kids 800 staff members we just have a fantastic 
uh, school district. And it takes so many people to give our kids those opportunities. And I know I, I, my grandmother is retired, cook from the kitchen in Lexington, Ohio. My aunt's retired uh, as assistant in the treasurer's office at Lexington. My uncle's retired. Uh, her brother, my uncle's retired as a maintenance person. And my mother retired 34 years driving school school bus at Lexington. And for the last eight years, she's driven as a sub. Uh, and she drove 97% of the days this past school years, eight years into retirement because she loves those kids at 75 years of age. And so I step back and I reflect on uh, how important and how appreciative we are of all of the people, not just our teachers, and we've got wonderful teachers here, but we have wonderful people and programs doing outstanding things for our, our students. And, and uh, that's what makes it a great time to be a CAC here. And when you look at uh, our, our fiscal side of things, when you know our, our financial forecast is in the black the next five years, uh, and we're adding new and improved programs, and changing a lot of things we're doing to give our kids opportunities in, in a modern world and those type of things and uh, I'm just so uh, appreciative of last school year and, and what everybody has, has done here and we as you've seen tonight from call to college and that's one example we get tremendous support from our community just tremendous support uh, here and so uh, we were out at a an outing a golf outing actually today to raise money to give scholarships uh, the Hall of, our Hall of Fame members to give scholarships back to our students and uh, the number of people that are involved in that it's, it's incredible and so uh, it's a great time to be a cat and we appreciate that well, I'd also like to thank the folks from McCall to College it's a unique wonderful program does a lot for our students uh, I'd like to welcome our new hires the ones that are here especially since you can bother just showing up um, and congratulate the folks who have switched positions. I know things will run seamlessly with pressure on you. All will go well. I think it'll be a step in the right direction for us. I'd also like to thank everybody for their understanding about the dampness of graduation. We were sort of caught in no man's <coughs> land between a radar that a few minutes before graduation said it was going to be fine and the reality that we all got drenched. And they're just, once we were there, best thing to do, barring lightning, which luckily there was none, was barge forward and grin and bear it. As Tim told several of the graduates as they came across the stage, it's just one more high school memory for you to remember the rest of your life. <laughs> programs, of the two programs. Pardon? I was going to uh, mention that uh, Mr. Bowman is, uh, we're going to, we have two programs, so we're mailing out dry programs, Bev can hold up a uh, copy, uh, to each uh, graduate that, that went across for their, for their family and appreciation. So it's, the ones that were there did not survive <laughs> the day before, <laughs> nor did uh, my white shirt probably most light colored clothes that anybody had on. <laughs> so uh, we will be sending two programs to each of the recent graduates so, so they have it. And with that, I would entertain a motion <coughs> to adjourn to executive session to discuss the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of an employee or employees. So moved. Second. Jeffrey. Mr. Arden? Yes. Mr. Flowers? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Ms. Nickham? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Time into executive session 725. Uh, we do not anticipate any business being conducted once we return.